Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are looking at the next part of uh, electric motors. And in front of us we have uh, March 2009 exam question relating to motors and dynamos. So let's look at this question now. Electric motors are used in pumps, fans and compressors. Electric motors can be either AC or DC. The diagram below illustrates one of these types of electric motors. Question 13.1.1. What type of electric motor is illustrated in the diagram? Right, 13.1.1. If you look at this here, we have we see that there's a very important component here, and this is the split ring commutator. So the split ring commutator creates direct current. If there were slip rings, then we would have created alternating current. Okay, next question. Give a reason for your answer. Yes, 13.1.1. The reason is the split ring commutator. Okay, 13.1.2. If the loop turns in a clockwise direction, in what direction is the current in section AB of the loop flowing in the diagram? Write down either from A to B or B to A. Now, in order to answer that question, we have to look at Fleming's uh, left-hand motor rule. Because we are dealing with motors, because we are dealing with motors, we have to look at the left hand. Fleming's left-hand motor rule. Now, they're talking about a part B to A. So you are working with me now. I want you to take your left hand and point your uh, pointing finger from north to south. And they're telling us it's going, go, going cl clockwise. So this section of the, the motor, the red section, if you take your thumb, you must point up. So your pointing finger points left to right. Your thumb is pointing up. And we see that your second finger points towards you. So because it points towards you, it will move from B to A. So the answer is B to A. Okay, the motor in the diagram is now changed to operate as a generator. So that's a nice part about this question. It tests both motors and generators. And the question is, on what principle does a generator Operate, the generator operates on inducing current and in grade 11 you did Faraday's law. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction. Now, just to remind ourselves, what did Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction state? It had to do with the changing magnetic field. It had to do with uh, the mag changing magnetic flux linkage, where we see that the wire cuts across the field lines of the magnet. And the quicker or more often that the loop or the wire, the copper wire, cuts across the magnetic field lines, the greater the induced EMF. And that's what we're talking about here. Induced EMF. I think that's very important. The generator works on an induced EMF. Because if you look at a generator, there is no cell. And because the wire moves within the coil, uh, voltage is induced. So you are making the EMF and you are making current. And that's the principle of the generator. And a good example of that is in a motor car, that if the car cannot start, then what you do is you put the handbrake down, you put the car in second gear, and you make the car roll a little. So the rolling of the car causes the rotation of the coil in the generator inside the car, uh, which is called an alternator. And as a result of that, you induce a current, and then you kickstart the car, and the car can start because of that, because you create the EMF.
13.1.4, draw a sketch graph of the potential difference versus time for this generator while it is functioning. Now, we did this in the last lesson, and just to show you the sketch graph, because it's a DC and it's direct current, the current cannot go into the lower quadrant. So your graph will only be the first quadrant, so it will look like that, and this will be voltage versus time. And we may have another picture. We have, may have the picture here just to show that. Let me just try and find the picture. Here's a picture where we see that the voltage versus time is only in the first quadrant. However, if we had alternating current, then we see that the diagram goes in the second quadrant. Let's just see if I can find that picture fast. This is the one we're looking at. And um, this is the one that if there's slip rings, then we see that the graph goes in both quadrants because of the slip rings, as we can see there. All right, coming back to the question, here's 13.2. The next part of the question, the diagram below shows a dynamo attached to the wheel of a bicycle when riding. A bicycle, the wheel rotates a magnet here, the coil. So here we see that this wheel rotates the magnet. And as a result of that, this rotating magnet has fixed wires here. And that creates a flux linkage between the magnet and the coil, which induces an EMF. And that is how uh, a current is induced in the coil of a dynamo. So just to write it down, the main points are 13.2, that there is a changing magnetic flux linkage sorry linkage between the rotating magnet and the coil of wires. And this causes uh, this causes and induce EMF. Let's just fix that. That induces the current. In the bulb, in the dynamo. Something to this effect. Okay, so that will be the conclusion of motors and dynamos, and we've just, this will be part three, and we just uh, did a small exam question to show us uh, what could be expected in the exam. Thanks for watching.